it actually is such a disservice to our families, to ourselves, to our future children, to future generations, to not be more aware of what birth and pregnancy and motherhood and womanhood can look like for us. Because so much of what's out there and what's portrayed of motherhood is a distorted view that leans into trauma, that leans into some sort of despair or some sort of hardship. And it's not to say that motherhood and pregnancy and giving birth is not hard. It is hard. But the thing is, We should have the mindset that we were built to do hard things, right? But real quick before we get into it, if you are new here, hi, I'm Jade. I've been on YouTube for a long time. I have evolved, grown transitioned transformed so much on this channel since I started it in 2010 and I'm so excited that you're here that you're joining in if you enjoy this video if you enjoy beauty content lifestyle content things of that nature with you know faith in Jesus sprinkled all over it okay then stick with me give me a subscribe give me a follow like share this video do all the things let's get connected on social media and stay connected this subject is one that is so so deeply close and important to my heart and should be so close and important to all of our hearts because we all came from a womb right for so many of us especially those of us who look like me black women biracial women, women of color, our birth experiences are not positive. So many of our birth experiences are traumatic. And being that this is my fourth pregnancy, and I've shared a lot about my journey through my pregnancies from giving birth in a hospital with an epidural to giving birth unmedicated at a birth center to giving birth at my home, unmedicated with just my husband to now being very expectant to see what God wants to do with this birth experience of my current baby that's bacon in the belly. I wanted to talk about why I chose as a black woman to have my babies outside of the hospital. And that's with having had a hospital experience. And so I've shared these stories kind of separately before on my channel, but I wanted to, especially in this season, I felt the need to really have more conversational content with you here on YouTube about what different kinds of birth experiences are available out there for us and answering some of the questions that I see people asking and have gotten myself so many times when it comes to natural births, home births, working with midwives, not using medication in your pregnancy or during your birth and labor and delivery um, experience and things like that. I wanted to just dive into this subject even more because first off, we should know these things. If we are able to conceive babies in our womb and our bodies without us telling it what to do, knows how to make bones and skin and hair and intestines and kidneys and all these things. It literally creates a whole organ just for the baby and literally grows it and then expels it, aka the placenta, when we give birth. Now, how many of us didn't know that you gave birth to two things when you had a baby? Me, okay? I did not know that before I had my first daughter. Like, I did not know that you gave birth and had a whole placenta come out of you after the baby. I thought they cut the cord, the baby came out, you know, and that was it. That was how (laughs) much I did not know about birth. And so many people are like that. And so I wanted to just take time in this season while I'm pregnant, while it's top of mind, to really dive into this. So 
this is gonna be the first of multiple videos where we just have conversations about birth, pregnancy, motherhood, and this different type of mindset that I've at least developed through being pregnant four times and having these different birth outcomes, different birth experiences along the way. So the number one thing I feel like people think about when they think about pregnancy or having babies or natural birth or home births, the first thing that comes up is fear, right? Fear that someone is not capable of being taken care of, whether it be, you know, you're worried about your sister or your cousin or yourself being taken care of in a hospital setting because at this point it's 2024 y'all and so many of us experience such traumatic birth experiences and black women are three to four times more likely to die during childbirth than white women in this country we have the worst birth outcomes of any industrialized country here in america and that's not just talking about black women that's talking about period like expecting mothers have the worst outcomes in america so you couple that with this idea that that's just the beginning of our motherhood journeys to jump right into why i chose to have babies outside of the hospital I want to first give you a little background. So I had my first daughter, Sarai, in a hospital in 2019. I had a positive hospital experience. Now, there were a few factors in my hospital experience that I think were very much so key to making it a positive hospital experience. One, even though I barely saw my OBGYN, she was a woman, she was white, but she was so caring and super genuine and I felt like she cared about me every time I stepped into her office. Next, my hospital, where I was in Oregon at the time, required that we took a hospital tour of the labor and delivery unit before we had the baby so that we would be familiar with the hospital that we gave birth at. And they also required as parents that we take birth classes. And this wasn't no one hour on a random Thursday night birth class. This was like, I think we did two or three full day Saturdays working with a doula who taught all of like this group of new parents, us included, all about different techniques for labor, um, different statistics and just different things to make sure that we were very well equipped to not just advocate for ourselves during that time, but also being able to be aware of our options as far as how we wanted to birth our baby and how we could support each other, me and my husband, through that experience. I don't know if all the teachers in that program were doulas, but we just so happen to have this white lady who was a doula for 30 years. So she was infusing not just the hospital experience, but she also had home birth experiences and birth center experiences. And she was the first person that I ever heard talk about natural birth and home birth and all these things. And so from those classes, I was very much so inspired to have a natural birth in the hospital. I wanted to have as least intervention as possible. And so I go into labor, I go in at about four centimeters dilated. I end up being in labor for like 26 hours, something like that. Around hour 19, I'm super exhausted, super tired. I had at that point exhausted all of my <laughs> techniques. I had been in the tub, I had tried nitrous gas, I had been on the bouncing ball, I had done the aromatherapy, I'd done the massaging, all the things to kind of help my body relax, but I was so tired and exhausted, so I ended up getting an epidural. And I knew and felt very confident that there was nothing wrong with me getting an epidural. Even though it was a change in my birth plan, I was very much so okay with that because I knew it wasn't about proving anything to anybody. So if you're a mom and you are deciding whether or not you want to get an epidural, it's like, choose what's best for you, period. You know? And so I'm glad I got the epidural that time because it helped my body relax. I was able to take a nap. And when it was time to push, I was still aware enough to physically 
have a pushing experience. I gave birth vaginally and thank God everything went as it was supposed to. My husband was holding one leg, the, the doctors really midwives. Cause so this is a third thing that was different for me was that I actually had a midwife team at the hospital and I did not know that when I went there. Okay. I had no idea what a midwife was. Right. And I had no idea that I just so happened to be at a hospital that had a midwifery team delivering babies. I did not know that that was even a thing, but come to find out later, there are hospitals that have midwifery services and programs integrated into their birth and like labor and delivery departments because they know the benefits of having midwives present in their hospitals. So I didn't know that, but I experienced that and I just was, I felt so cared for by the nurses, by the midwives. And the thing that threw me for a loop was I didn't know that my OBGYN wasn't going to be at my birth. I had no idea that I wasn't going to see her when I had my baby. And that was probably the biggest shock because I had only been really wrestling with fear my entire pregnancy, whether it was fear of just the unknown, what it was going to be like to give birth to then being diagnosed with gestational diabetes and being considered high risk at that point. I am having to prick my finger five times a day, change my entire eating habits, all of these things. And it really was hard for me to grapple with all of that. So there was a lot of fear on top of that. I didn't know about these like negative birth outcomes and like black mothers dying in the hospital until I was pregnant. So I'm reading that while I'm pregnant for the first time. And I'm like, wait, what? Like, I never knew this. Like, I never knew that like things are this like terrible for black mothers in hospitals. So now I'm scared. So I wanted to be in the hospital at that time, especially because I'm like, I want to make sure that there's enough medical staff and resources available that if anything goes wrong, there's people there that can help me and my baby. And I was even wanting to stay in the hospital longer after I had her. Like I stayed in the hospital for two days, I think it was. And I wanted to stay longer because I was really like, what am I supposed to do with this newborn baby? I, I have no idea like what I'm doing. And so my sister was there who had had a baby already. And my husband already had a child when he was 19, but she didn't live with us primarily. And he was 19 when he had her. So he didn't know what he was doing at that time either. So fast forward to now, he's 28. And so we're just in a different place in our lives. And so he's also learning and relearning, you know, what it means to be a dad to a newborn. And my mom ended up coming like that day uh, when I got home from the hospital. And so her memory of newborns and babies wasn't really that great. So she did her best and supported. I mean, I was so grateful for her presence, um, but I still felt like I didn't know what I was doing. And so I was scared when we left the hospital because I was like, I feel like the nurses are helping and like they know what to do. And like, I don't know what to do. And so it was a lot of fear wrapped around pregnancy. But at the end of the day, I had a positive hospital outcome. But when it came to my second baby, which I got pregnant about a year later, a little over a year later, it was the middle of COVID. Mind you, I had my positive hospital experience before COVID. During COVID, I found out I was pregnant again. And I was still on this like high of wanting to give birth again, but like do it the way I originally planned, which was naturally. And knowing that when I got in the tub at the hospital for just relief during my labor with my daughter, I actually really enjoyed it. It was really calming. And I was like, I think I want to have a natural birth and I want to have a water birth. I didn't watch nobody's video okay i didn't watch nobody's water birth vlog birth vlogs i was not that girl i was very very like i saw that there was a birth center at this time we had moved to dallas saw that there was a birth center in dallas and reached out to another girl that i knew that had gone there asked her what her experience was like she loved it and so i was like all right let's go take a tour because i knew that if i couldn't have anybody that I wanted in the hospital because at that time you had to wear masks. You could only have one visitor or two visitors depending on the hospital you were at. Just a totally different environment than what I had in Oregon too. 
even the difference between hospitals in Oregon versus hospitals in Texas. So I was very much so like, I feel led to go this different route. And I knew as soon as we took the tour of the birth center that like that was where I was supposed to have my baby. And along this journey as well, I'm growing spiritually. I had my daughter in 2019 and I had my son in 2021. And between those two, I really dove into my faith in Christ. And so everything became so much more spiritual for me because I recognized that I was living the life that I had somewhat dreamed of growing up, but also had like not prepared for at all. I did not prepare to be a mom. I couldn't cook. I couldn't do much domestically, okay? I was a worker, all right? I knew how to run a business. I knew how to create content. I knew how to, you know, get in where I fit in. I had degrees. Like I, I, I knew how to do that stuff, but I did not know how to be the type of mom that I had always envisioned for myself, nor had I fully envisioned what that would look like because I just hadn't really thought about it. I kind of never got past the whole like, oh my gosh, what is it going to be like when I'm pregnant thing? And then you're like, well, you got a baby now. Now what? And I'm like, I don't know. And so I started growing in my faith because I started hitting these roadblocks. And this is a separate conversation, so I won't go too deep into this, but y'all let me know if you want me to in a different video. But I was just really struggling with balancing who I was as a person and being a mom and you know that postpartum fourth trimester season where you are trying to figure out who you are as a new person really not understanding that it wasn't just me <laughs> like I had gone through a biological and spiritual evolution when I became a mom and I was never going to be the same again and nobody told me that before like nobody told me that you legitimately get like a brain we wire. Like you are a different person when that baby comes into the earth. Even if that baby doesn't successfully come into the world. Like if you have some sort of infant loss or pregnancy loss, as soon as one cell in your body starts to grow life, you have begun to evolve and to change. And so that, no matter what the outcome of your pregnancy is, stays with you and it changes you. And I don't think we talk enough about that time period of like re-getting to learn who you are as a woman, re-understanding what it means for you to be a mom or even like be yourself and a mom at the same time or a wife and a mom at the same time. And with each pregnancy, it happens again. So. I knew between my first and my second pregnancy that I had changed and I wanted different things and I didn't feel as much fear, but this time I knew that I had to fight my fear with my faith. So when I knew that I was supposed to go to the birth center and met the midwives and realized that a lot of the midwives in that practice were also believers in Christ, I felt spiritually like I was home and I felt spiritually that not only was my baby and myself going to be physically taken care of, but my spiritual body and, and my baby's spiritual body would be covered in prayer. And that was important to me. So faith became a cornerstone of my birth experiences from then on. And so had this beautiful water birth experience. I have shared this online. It's gotten millions of views. And it is the thing that I feel had shifted me again in that season. And I knew that I could never go back to a hospital because of just how incredible and peaceful, yet just powerful. Because uh, child, if you watch that video, you gonna hear me screaming, okay? <laughs> and it, it wasn't not painful, all right? But it was a difference of being in an environment that felt so serene and calm and I was in a room with maybe two other people three other people at a time versus nurses and doctors coming in and out and doing all this stuff and all these lights and all these cords and all these monitors and it wasn't all that it was literally like a bedroom with a jacuzzi tub in it and my midwife checking me making sure I'm okay 
you know, coaching me through, my husband rubbing my back, holding my hand, letting me squeeze the life out of him, like doing anything I needed to do just to like release some of the the pressure and the pain that I was feeling. And then to literally give birth, have my husband catch my baby and lift him up out of the water, give him and put him directly on my chest and then stand up myself, get up and lay in the bed myself and then you know, get checked and everything, everything is good. And then within an hour or two, get back in the tub and have an herbal bath with my newborn son. And just this feeling of euphoria and like that golden hour high that they talk about after you have a baby that you're supposed to experience. Because see, I didn't experience that when I had an epidural. I did it. Because the epidural is essentially, you you know, they're pumping drugs into your body. So even though physically it helps you get through your birth, it does detach you a bit spiritually from what's happening. And so it does halt some of those natural, I think they're those natural endorphins that come through childbirth and things. It blocks some of that stuff. Um, and so you do lose some of your just natural kind of experience when you do get an epidural and like i said i had a positive hospital experience so it's not like it's completely you know all for nothing and shot but there is a difference okay there is a difference and so that was incredible and when i got pregnant again six months later okay not planned none of my none of my babies have been planned six months later I find out I'm pregnant again and I was like yeah I'm I'm down for this home birth like if I could do it in the birth center because even the day that I was giving birth in the birth center I was like I could really stay home and that was the first time I ever felt like that because before then I was very much so happy going to the birth center very much so like okay cool because the birth center was like literally an eye shot from the hospital so literally i still felt like i was super supported and like medical help was there if needed like we were right there across the street basically and so i felt safe and but literally that day when i was like man i could really lay in my bed and just like have the baby here but that's not what happened but that kind of is what happened next so with my third baby, I had a home birth and I had a birth pool in my living room. And the wild part about that story, I've shared it before, but to give you just a sneak peek, you know, snapshot of what happened, cliff notes, I ended up going into labor. Didn't really think I was in labor because I was just like, all right, these Braxton Hicks are pretty intense. And I had, you know, preterm labor with my second baby for like two or three weeks before I really was in labor. So that's what I'm thinking is happening. And child, it was not that. It was real labor. And, you know, they say the more babies you have, kind of the quicker things go and more your body's used to it. So that was the truth for me. So I, you know, was chilling um and was feeling the contractions a bit but they intensified and within like a couple hours i was in that birth pool literally giving birth my midwife did not make it okay so it was literally me and my husband in our living room my other two kids sleep in their beds and we are having a whole baby and not only that but my son who was born that day that night had his cord wrapped around his neck and my husband with no other training but being at births with me and that those birth classes at that hospital three years prior literally operated as if he knew exactly what to do he was so calm holy spirit was guiding him so specifically y'all it was insane because i never felt an ounce of fear in that experience at all like i'm talking about there was never a moment where i was like freaked out that the midwife wasn't there i never felt fear okay and that's why i think as my experience as a mom has progressed and as i've had more babies my faith has increased so much and it's because i have experienced god's hand in every single one of my births and the more babies i have had the more pronounced his presence has been. The more I 
demedicalized my pregnancy and my birth experiences, the more God was able to expand. My husband unwrapped his, his cord from around his neck. Child, he was good. Walked to my room, got in my bed. Midwife knocked on the door right then and checked the baby. Baby's perfect. I'm perfect. It was great. Like there was, that was it. There's no, there's no, you know, catch. There's no, you know, terrible ending. It was literally a beautiful birth experience. And I have had some ups and downs in my postpartums now. So that's a different conversation that we will have in a future video. But when it comes to just why I chose to give birth outside of a hospital is because of these experiences, is because you can't have the amount of safety and the amount of familiarity and the amount of comfort in a hospital that you can all that you can have at your home. And this is also not just, you know, deciding one day that you're gonna have a baby at home. This is creating an environment in your home where peace lives there, where joy lives there. So it's not just about, you know, prepping for a baby and to have them in your home when you're pregnant. It's about how do you live day to day and how are you inviting God into your home every day? And I believe that it's a spiritual experience and a physical experience. And for me, the space that I'm giving birth in has to be spiritually intact and correct, not just physically intact and correct. And so there's also been so much research from a midwifery perspective and ancient kind of ways and traditions that our people used to do, people in general, when communities had midwives and birth workers invested in the community and you weren't going to a hospital to give birth. You were giving birth in your home or, you know, in a specific place in your community. And there were specific people that that's what they did. And they didn't go to a school to learn about, you know, catching babies. They learned from grand midwives. They learned from the grandmamas that was helping all the people in the community to give, you know, give birth. And they knew how the body worked and they knew how to care for mom and care for baby and have positive birth outcomes because pregnancy is not a medical condition. It is a natural like process of life, yet we look at it through a medical lens so much because of that fear, right, that we talked about before, like the medical industry and healthcare and all these things are so prominent in our lives and so many things can go wrong, right? But like so many things could go right. And I think about your mindset when you think about pregnancy and birth is so important. And for me, the foundation of that, combating that fear was growing my faith. So now in this pregnancy, in my fourth pregnancy, I have chosen to work with the same midwife that I had with my last baby who didn't make it to the birth, but prayerfully she will be there this time um which also is a whole nother thing because i really got to talk to y'all about how my midwife tari has become my sister and has covered me in prayer through that whole entire pregnancy through this pregnancy in so many different ways she has become part of my family and we have built such a relationship that you know i think there's so much to be said even there um and that's the also the other difference of like having a baby outside of a hospital and working with a midwife is that it is relationship based. It is a relationship where your midwife knows you, knows your family, especially if you're doing home birth, like they come to your home. I do all of my prenatal visits at home besides going to get a sonogram or doing, you know, even labs like she takes my blood and does my blood pressure and everything here at my house, like, you know, because midwives are certified medical professionals they have I, I can't remember exactly what level and i think it depends on state you know the state that you're in but my midwife had to get certified by the state as a medical professional so she's worked in hospital settings and she's worked in more holistic you know natural homeopathic settings and she even though she's in her mid-30s she's been helping people give birth since she was 15 because she was a part of like a special like hospital program for teenagers so when i tell you like she loves what she does and it shows 
and she has such a spiritual perspective on it rooted in faith rooted in god and christ it's just such a beautiful gift to have as i've walked through my pregnancy and so that has just been such a positive that i never got in the hospital like i liked my obg and she was very nice and caring but i didn't know her i didn't know about our kids i didn't know about how she was as a mom i didn't know none of that but with Tari, my midwife now, it's like we have a real relationship that if I'm worried about something, I'm calling her, okay? I'm not even playing. I'm calling her. I know that she'll pick up my phone calls. I know that I'm talking to her. If she can't be physically present, she, she has people that support her, that can step in for her. Like, they've got protocols and stuff. So, for me, it's like, do I see myself even going back into a birth center? I don't think so because I loved having my baby at home because I've created an environment in my home to garner and foster love and joy and peace. And I have even manufactured my bedroom into a birth suite. Like that's that was my intention when I had my, my second baby and we were in this house was that if I'm gonna be spending so much time nursing babies throughout the night and doing all the things, like my bedroom needs to be a birth oasis, a mom oasis. It needs to be bright, it needs to be comfortable, it needs to be fresh, it needs to just be all the things that I want it to be. And that's what I did. So when it came to birthing my son in my living room and then coming into this bedroom and laying with him and then literally my two other kids hop in the bed because at this point they woke up okay and being able to meet their little brother for the first time just moments after he's been born oh my god it is literally like such a beautiful experience to have with your family and so for this pregnancy, I'm praying, like I'm really hoping that God will give me the gift of having my children there while I'm giving birth. That is the prayer, okay? I would, I have a vision of myself giving birth actually in the daytime and I've had all my children at night. So I've had this vision where I'm like giving birth in the daytime and I'm just like, Lord, please make this a reality. <laughs> please make this a reality because I would love to be able to have just that experience with like my four-year-old daughter who is now so tapped in okay she knows that she has a baby sibling in my belly and she talks to it she rubs it she wants to feel it kicking and she's checking on me when I'm you know, wobbling around or I'm saying my back is hurting and she'll literally come and put her hand on my back and try and say, you know, come on, mommy, let's go rest. Like she just is such a gem. And so I want her to see even at four what it's like to give birth because it's such a fundamental part of our lives as women, even if we don't ever do it ourselves. Like I want her to be the type of woman who supports her sisters her friends her cousins through their birth experiences any woman through their experience as a mom i want her to have that understanding of how precious and how beautiful it can be not perfect not you know it's only pretty when the mom is dressed up and looks gorgeous right after giving birth and you know not all that I want her to see the true beauty of it in its rawness, in its realness, um, surrounded by love and God's hand on every single person that is in the room and not to grow up with this idea that birth is traumatic and pregnancy should be scary for women that look like her. So I hope that this video inspired you to look deeper into out of hospital birth experiences and what that could look like for you. If you have any specific questions that you would love for me to cover, because there's a lot of things that come into this, right? Like how much does it cost? How do you find a midwife? What's the difference between a midwife and a doula? What do contractions really feel like? How do you prepare yourself for a natural birth? What if I can't handle the pain? There are so many questions that can be answered. And I would love to answer them for you. So definitely drop me some comments down below. 
leave me a DM on Instagram, hit me up on TikTok, do whatever you feel led to do. You can even send me an email, child, and I will get back to you because I'm really invested in helping us feel more empowered about our pregnancy experiences, our birth experiences, and our experiences in general as moms, as women, as we walk through a really crazy life, okay? This is a crazy times, y'all, but it does not mean that we have to operate like the world. The world can be acting crazy, child, but with God and Christ within us, we live in a totally different reality. We live in a kingdom reality. <laughs> One of my babies is crying. So that means that this video is over. <laughs> so cheers to us starting this journey together if you are new here. And cheers if we are continuing the journey together because I appreciate you and I hope you come back and see me soon. Bye.